So let's take a look at configuring the Open Exchange Rates query component from the Matillion ETL. Before we can start that, there are a couple of prerequisites that we need to ensure are met. First, we need to ensure that we have an Open Exchange Rates account on the Open Exchange Rate website. Once in there, we'll be able to create an app ID and get that value back. That process is additionally documented within the Matillion support portal if you search for the article Open Exchange Rates Third Party OAuth. That article reviews the steps in creating that app ID and getting that value back from the Open Exchange Rates website. Once we've done that, we can go in and start to configure that Open Exchange Rates query component within Matillion ETL. Initially, we're going to need to create an orchestration job. And once we're in an orchestration job, you'll be able to find the Open Exchange Rates query component within the orchestration load, unload, and finance folder. You can drag that component out into our workspace, and then initially, we'll need to connect it to our start component. Now we're ready to configure our Open Exchange Rates query component. Initially, we're going to need to st uh, set the app ID, which we had just received back from the Open Exchange Rates website. Now we're going to need to select a data source. The data sources are additionally documented also on the Matillion support portal. You can search for the Open Exchange Rates data model, and within this article, you'll see the link to views. The views correlate to the data sources within the query component. For the purposes of this example, we're going to use the latest view. Once we've chosen a data source, we'll be able to select some fields within the data selection parameter. The fields available will be based upon what data source we've selected. Here, we're going to just select all of the fields. By default, the query component has a limit of 100 rows returned. You can remove this limit just by removing that value. Next, we're going to need to specify a target table within which we're going to want to put this data. And we want to specify a bucket in which we're going to want to stage that data. Once we configure those, we're now ready to run the component. We can see that 171 rows were created by fetching the data from the latest data source from the Open Exchange Rates Query component. We can now validate that data within a transformation job. And here we can see the data that has been pulled back from the open exchange rate query component via the latest data source. And now you're ready to use this data to additionally transform or augment your data within your cloud data warehouse.